Hello guys, in this episode, we blend multiple exposures. Bonjour mesdames et messieurs and welcome to episode 58 of my photography, Lightroom and Photoshop tips. My name is Serge Ramelli and I'm a French photographer living in Paris. And I am back in Paris, I'm very happy about that. Last week, in episode 57, I showed you the five top best features that I love in Lightroom 5. Check out, it was a very popular episode. Plus, I also give you the raw file used in the episode. This week, we are going to go in the French Riviera in Cassis, close to Marseille. A beautiful, beautiful small village in the south of France. And we are going to take three different exposures. This is the normal exposure. This is the underexposure. This is the overexposure. First, we're going to retouch the photo in Lightroom, each exposure, and then we're going to blend the exposure using Photoshop. It's an amazing technique and it's the best I have seen so far to get the most natural but punchy result in your landscape. Let's check it out. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. So today we are going to do digital blending. This is something uh, I'm asked often to show to people because it's, I think, one of the most powerful methods today to get a natural but very powerful result. Why? Because when you take a photo with a camera, uh, the ca even a very powerful camera like the 5D Mark II, it does not have an idemic, idemic range to get everything. For example, this is the, what I call the normal shot, okay? And this is uh, the underexposed shot. Now, if you look at the underexposed shot, you will see you have all the details in the sky. And this is the overexposed shot where you have nothing, no details in the sky, but you've got all the details in the shadows. So uh, up to today, we've been using HDR technology to get the best out of all the three worlds. But the problem with uh, HDR is that it gives a look. It gives a look, it can give halos, it gives an illustrative look. I'm going for a more natural feeling to it. So the way to go is the following. First, let's retouch the normal photo. Uh, this, I, I took the three photos using a Canon 5D Mark II with a bracketing option that automatically takes three photos. So, uh, so let's go into the develop module and let's retouch it from scratch. So you know my formula. I always open up the shadow at first and then bring down the highlights, making a photo which is not contrasty at all. And then I press the option key and you go to the right with the white until I see some pixels, okay? All these pixels means th that it's totally burned. So I have to back it down to make sure nothing is burned. And so I achieve what we call a white point. Okay, now I've got that. And now I'm gonna go and do the blacks. It's the reverse, but I go further down with the blacks. Okay, so that's not so bad, but the photo is still, um, uh, you see now the histogram is in such a way that all the information has been spread totally across all the tones, which is pretty good. But we still have some more to go. I want to do, uh, I'm gonna lower the exposure because I wanna give it a, a night feel to it. Okay, and now let's find a temperature. Now, you know, if you follow my videos, you know that there's a temperature that I love uh, for the sunset and that's going into the shade. If you go into the shade on Lightroom, you get like a little bit of a reddish magenta feeling that I think is works well on sunsets. Okay, uh, last but not least, let's add some clarity. So we boost the whole thing and let's add some vibrance. So we have like a more saturated feeling. But you see, uh, we hardly cannot see the sunset and that's a big problem. And that's why we're gonna use the underexposed photo to correct that. So now let's just go down on our checklist and let's just add some, let's unable the profile corrections to make sure that any, uh, you see when I uh, take it off and on, it takes like a whole vignetting effect. Uh, and it also it makes the, the photo less, uh, um, with a better correction. Um, okay. And let's take care of the noise. Let's look if there is some noise here. Oh, See here, we have a little red fringe here and some green fringe here. This is chromatic aberration. So let's go there and remove chromatic aberration. And it took care of that. So that's really cool. Okay, last but not least, let's press auto to get the, uh, some more corrections off. Well, the buildings are not so much straight. So let's check what level is going to do. Okay, not much. Let's check what vertical is going to do. Uh, it doesn't do very much. Okay, I'll just leave it on auto. But that's fine. I mean, 
it's a bit you know it's a it's a bit distorted but that's still fine for me because i want to do everything in lightroom 5 as much as i can okay uh, one thing that i also do is the camera calibration uh, when you have sunset sometime if you go to uh, camera landscape which is basically a different way lightroom has to interpret the raw file uh, it's just different uh, you know ways of interpreting raw file adobe standard that's how it looks and camera landscape that's how it looks so with camera landscape we get a lot more yellows which i kind of love you know so that's kind of cool uh, one thing i forgot is the noise let's look if there is a, some noise here that's what i was going for earlier well the, the photo almost has no noise so i have a formula when it comes to noise which is that i am um, I basically, even if you don't see any noise, I'm still going to take about 10. I put the value at 10. It just, it takes some hidden noise. And then the sharpening, it's just the basic sharpening that I do in Lightroom. I might do some more later on in Photoshop. Uh, the sharpening, I'm going to get it around 100 minus the value of luminance. So it's going to be 90, which is still very sharp. It's still, oh, it's a bit too much. Let's back it down to about 80. Yeah, that's a bit my basic sharpening and noise. So a pretty straightforward retouching. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this value. I'm going to select all three photos, click on sync, and I'm going to synchronize all I've done so far on all three photos. Now, if I go into the underexposed photo, uh, it took all I did on the first one, but look at the sky. Now. I'm going to retouch that photo just with the viewpoint of how does the sky look like. Uh, I just care about the sky. So maybe I'm going to boost. It's a bit too dark for me. So I'm going to get the exposure uh, back down to uh, back up to zero. Maybe a little bit more. Something like that. Maybe add a bit of vibrance. And one thing you should know is on, uh, underexposed photo will have a lot of noise. If you look at the, uh, at the sky here, it's a bit grainy. So on the end, underexposed photo, I usually... Uh, go, uh, yeah, I'm going to get the sharpening a bit lower and I'm going to, I'm going to get the luminance at least up to about, uh, yeah, something like 30 until you got a smooth sky. Now, one thing which is important is that some sharpening is happening here in the sky and we don't want that. So we can use the masking option. It's like Photoshop. You press the option key and you go to the right. Anything which is white is going to get sharpened. And as you move to the right, anything which is black is not going to get sharpened. So I don't want any sharpening on the sky because it just makes a grainy sky. I don't want that. So now we've got a good, nice sort of soft sky. That's what we want. But so, and let's look at the underexposed photo. Now the underexposed photo, sometimes I use the overexposed photo. So sometimes I use, sometimes I don't use. But uh, let's maybe make this one a bit darker, reversed of the underexposed. So if we have to mix it up, we can use that. Okay, so now all photos are retouched and they are selected. So right click, edit, and open as layers in Photoshop. What that's going to do is it's going to open up Photoshop CC and make every raw file to be on its own layer. So let me press on pause until we are, we are there. Here we are. Uh, the top layer is the normal photo. If I take it off, we can see the, uh, the one which is under, which is the... Um, underexposed and below is the overexposed photo. So that's how I like to work. The normal photo on top, the underexposed right below and the overexposed uh, at the bottom. So let's just take care of the sky. For this, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a mask and um, I'm actually gonna create a mask with pressing the option key, which is gonna create a black mask. That's gonna make the, the whole photo uh, completely uh, mask and we only see uh, what's under it. So now let's take a white brush. So I press B for brush. Let's take a brush of about, uh, yeah, no, I'm going to get it to 100. No, not 100, like about yeah 50. And I'm going to brush with white. And brushing with white on the mask is going to make, uh, it's going to take this one off. And uh, I just want to go, maybe it's a bit strong, 50%. Let me just get the flow a bit lower and this a bit lower. And I just want to, take out some of this, um, I'm just blending both of them. But I still want to get, I like the, the look and feel of the underexposed photo, especially on top here. So as you brush, you just mix both of them. And uh, now sometimes if things have moved, it can create some, uh, some, uh, some elements which are a bit uh, fuzzy. 
and uh, not very neat so you need to be careful on that but i know on this photo it works pretty well like the rocks did not move between the both exposure but i like to i like to keep the photo what i call dense with density so a bit dark okay and i like to go yeah maybe get this a bit all right so yeah that's the basic thing so don't make it too much on the sky because then it's going to take out the, so let me press command z make sure you keep the sky a bit dark okay so that's the first step so we mixed both exposure and now um now i go very destructive on this until when i'm happy with what i got i just select both layer and press command e and now i merged just into one of them that's how i work but you can work non-destructive and I actually show you that in my full workflow course but i just want to go fast and show you the basic idea and next i can create another mask uh but this time i'm creating a white mask so this time i'm going to paint with black so i press x and uh, maybe get some of the uh make some of the over photo up here especially for the water it's going to make the water a bit more white uh, which could be cool so I'm gonna make some of the uh, overexposed photo appear a little bit and it can be interesting especially for the water I like the water to be a bit a bit uh, yeah more clear okay something like that and uh, well if it's too much you can just click on the layer because I think I want a bit too much and you can lower the density of the la of the layer and it's gonna yeah it's gonna make it a more subtle mixed blend between the two. Okay, so that's the basic way. Now I'll show you the final photo because I have a lot more retouching that I'm gonna do, but that's, it's gonna to be too long to put it in just one episode. So uh, you have to go to my workflow course if you wanna see all the retouching, but that's just a basic idea of how you mix the different exposure. So I'm gonna put on pause, I'm gonna finish up the photo and show you the final result. Okay, so this is how it looks like when it's finished. Let me show it to you in full screen mode uh, with a bit of, uh, of other techniques of mine. And uh, this type of technique I show you in my full workflow course. It was too long to show you the whole retouching in just one of my uh, podcast episode. So if you want to know more about this technique, you can go to my website, photosearch.com. And in this course, which is called the full workflow course, which is $47, it's about three hours of course, I really show you this type of techniques of how I mix different exposures and how I do all my final retouching like I just did here. And also, uh, I have released last week my new Lightroom 5 full training, uh, which is uh, basically if you go to individual training, you can either buy from a different module, like just the importing modules for $17, or just the retouching modules for $45, or just uh, making books, uh, maps, and prints for $15, or slideshow and web galleries. If you want to, but if you want to get a good price, instead of buying each module, you can go to packages, which is the basic default page when you arrive on my uh, put on my tutorials, and you can buy the, the the full package, and you pay it $77 instead of $89. And today, I'm happy to also announce that I'm making a new package, which is my workflow package and my full Lightroom 5 training. So it's like almost 10 hours of training for $107 instead of 124. That's really the best price that I have. Uh, so you've got really all my latest, latest, latest retouching technique, which you can buy directly here. Last but not least, I have a present for you. Uh, if you want to get the raw files, the three raw files that, that I'm using here, uh, from this nice photos. By the way, I forgot to tell you that this is in uh, Cassis, uh, close to Marseille in the French Riviera, a, one of the most beautiful village of the French Riviera. So if you want to get the three 21 million pixels raw files to train this at home on digital blending, you can, and it's free to get these raw files and all the past raw files used in my episode for free. All you have to go is, is go to news, sign up and there you will be able to sign up on my newsletter uh, this way you get all the free goodies that you want in exchange i will spam the hell out of you i will send you a lot of emails no, i'm kidding i'm just sending you about a, 
uh, an email per week with my newsletter. You get my latest news and latest podcast. And voila, all you have to do is put your name and email and in exchange, you will get a lot, a lot of, a lot of photos and goodies and things which, uh, uh, photos from all over the world and you won't need to travel for getting them. So I hope you do check out my latest packages and you do check out uh, the, the newsletter so you can get all this stuff for free. And let's get back to the studio. Okay, guys, I hope you like that tutorial and you will check out my Lightroom 5 course and my workflow bundle that just came out. It has a lot of success and it's really the best price. You get over nine hours of training for under $100. So it's pretty cheap and you get all the raw files. Also, the great news is if you sign up for the newsletter, you get all the raw files for all the podcasts just in one page. So really check this out and sign up for all this free stuff. Thank you very much and I'll see you next week.